Hey guys, so it's Anar again. Um, we're going to be doing the section 4.5 Exploring Properties of Exponential Functions video. Um, yeah, so let's get right into it. So here's a list of things that we're going to be covering in today's video. Um, today's video is really short and it's going to be mostly um, theory based, but we do have a couple of examples at the end of the video. So. What are exponential functions? Um, a function in the form y is equal to a, b to the power of x, which you already know, so here are just a couple examples as a refresh uh, of what um, an exponential function is. Okay, so to distinguish exponentials, we're going to be talking about first and second differences, which is something you guys have seen um, in the previous chapters. But basically, linear, quadratic, and exponential functions all have unique patterns, and that's how you can distinguish them from one another. So um, if we have a look at it, a linear function has an exponent, power of 1. The quadratic function has a squared term, and the exponential function has a positive base, um, but a variable exponent. So um, in a linear function, you have constant differences, and that means that delta y is always equal to 1. So the slope is always increasing by a certain value, right? And that, ju that just basically means um, the difference between the y output value when x is equal to 0 and 1 is the exact same for the difference between x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2 for those output values, so those y values, which essentially is the exact same thing as saying that the slope is equal at every single point. So um, in a quadratic function, the first differences are related by addition, but the second differences are constant. So if we look at the graph, and usually this is explained by a table of values, but um, these pictures were taken right out of the textbook and I feel like they really um, explain what it looks like when you put it into a graph, right? So um, the difference between the y values at x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2, those differences are related by addition and that's what explains or distinguishes a quadratic function from the others. Um, an exponential function um, has first differences that are related by multiplication, but the second um, finite differences are not constant. So if we look at the graph right here, you can see that um, when x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2, those y values are related by multiplication. And you can see that by the delta y values as you keep going and increase your x value. Okay, so um, the characteristics of exponentials, we're just going to be going over um, the B term specifically. Um, so a lot of times in math you don't have to commit things to memory, but um, unfortunately this is one of the times where you do have to commit this to memory, but it's super easy. So if B is greater than zero, the function is defined. Um, your domain is X is an element of the reals like all exponential functions, and um, there's no restriction on y except for y is greater than zero, which is basically the restriction on any untransformed exponential function. So if b is greater than one, um, it's an increasing function, and the greater the b value, the faster the growth. So if it was two to the power of x versus three to the power of x, three to the power of x is gonna grow faster than two to the power of x. Um, if the b value is between 0 and 1, so if it was something like 1 half, it's a decreasing function. But the lesser the b value, the faster the decay. So um, we're going to solidify this with some examples. So um, in this one, we're just going to go over two more examples. Um, and we're just going to identify the domain, range, asymptote, and graph of the function. So basically, um, in this particular function, the domain is x is an element of the reals, but the range is y is less than 4 because of the negative 4 at the end of um, the equation. And um, it's because of the translation of 4 units down. And that moves the asymptote as well to y is equal to negative 4. So you can see that in this graph over here. 
right? So there's an asymptote at y is equal to negative 4, meaning it doesn't actually touch that line. Um, and that's why, that's another reason why, I should say, that it's not y is less than or equal to 4, because it doesn't actually touch the asymptote. Um, y is equal to 2 to the power of 2 um, multiplied by x plus 2. So the domain of this function is x is an element of the reals, and because there's nothing in the y direction, um, transformations-wise, uh, the range just remains y is greater than 0. So you can see that because then the asymptote remains in the exact same position, y is greater than 0, because there's no transformation applied in the y direction. So that is shown in this graph over here. Um, that's actually the end of this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it and keep watching. Thank you.